okay so in this video we'll be talking about integration no? so integrations we'll be uh, trying to know the concept of integration um, a overview of its application and how does um, integration came to be no okay so integration maybe just write that word here integration integration is also known as in as a process no this is an anti differentiation no? differentiation okay. so it is the process of getting the function from a given derivative okay so that is how we are going to see uh, to um, describe the process of integration so getting the function from a given derivative no so if you have um, finished your differential calculus so you know what is a derivative so the common um, problem on this one is get the derivative of a function now in integration, so we are given with a with a derivative. Then we apply or we make some um, uh, mathematical manipulation to get the function. So basically, integration is the inverse of differentiation. So that's why it is called a anti-derivative. No? Okay. So the symbol for integration is this one okay maybe we should um write this one so this is the symbol for integration no so that's a symbol so for example if we have a function no an f of x so this is the given function in order to get this function we need to integrate a certain derivative which is f of x dx so this is the derivative so if we will finished or we have done the integration then we will get to the f of x now the question is how does integration or anti-differentiation came about okay so if we try to know the application of derivative so or try to remember the application of differentiation so it is getting the infinitesimal changes on a certain function okay so the, uh, in physics we call it the instantaneous value of a certain um, property or a certain, uh, of a certain uh, phenomena so the infinitesimal or the small bits no so that is the process of um, differentiation so that's why we get the derivative of a function in order to know the value of that function at a certain instant or the change of the function at a certain variable so that's why um basically the the the, the derivative of, of a certain function is in terms of another function or the independent variable now for integration so integration for example if we have here the graph no certain graph okay of your graph so for this one this will be our um, this will be our speed no? our velocity okay and here will be our time okay then we have your one okay two three okay so maybe usually this is the velocity because the velocity is the um, dependent variable so we just write here the velocity no so that is that will be the vertical axis and this will be our time okay so one two three okay okay so for example at a certain uh, so at one second the velocity is two okay two then we have here maybe at two seconds the velocity is three then it will drop to at, at three seconds so it decelerate into one 
So if we are going to graph this one here, huh? okay, we are going to graph. So this will be the graph of our of our um of our velocity, no? So this is the graph of our velocity versus time. Now the question is if we are going, for example, we add here 4, then 4 will also, for example, it will have a 2. Okay. Okay. So, it will be our graph. If we are going to get the area of this one, no? the area of this graph, how we are going to do that? Now, there are um, applications for this one. The reason we are going to get the area here, the area of this curve here, Okay, because this area will be the distance traveled by our object. No? Distance traveled by our object. Okay, so the essence of our area is that is we, um, usually we are going to get the area by, for example, a rectangle that will be a length times width. For a triangle, it is one half base times height. But to get the area of certain curves, so before the advent of um, integration, so we will, the, the usual way is to create small rectangles. No? So this is what's so called as the rectangular rule. Okay? Okay. So to create small rectangles so the sum of the areas of each of this triangle is the area of the curve but remember the um what's called the there is a certain um space here area here which is not accounted for for by this triangle so that's why it is not an accurate so the rectangular rule sometimes just an appro approximation so what we are going to do or what what we should do in order for this approximation to be exact. So that is to create smaller, no? smaller, infinite, uh, infinitely small rectangles which can, uh, which can accommodate all of the spaces of this curve. And in order for us to do that, so we need to integrate. Now, the, the other word for integration, okay, integration is summation okay summation but when we say summation summation has an infinite value infinite value no infinite um, limits so for example from a certain uh, from we need uh, we get the summation from the first uh, value to the last value then we can get the summation but the summation here is the summation of each of the value of the rectangle Okay, so that's why it is called integration because you are integrating the value of each of these rectangles. For example, this, rec this rectangle has, and okay, uh, for this one, this one, we need to have this one here. So, so for this one, example, this is um, a certain value, no? Certain value. So this is x sub uh, 1 and x sub 2. So this is our width. And this is our um, dx. Okay, so we could say that the that the area for this one, the area this one is rectangle is the area is equal to x sub one, x sub two times dx. So this is for this one. That the other triangle, for example, this is x three. This is also another dx. So we could say that that area is x this x two x uh, two minus x one. So that x2 minus x3 dx now if we are going to get the in the summation or the if we are going to integrate each of this infinite area then we could say that the area okay the area the area of the whole curve is equal to the integral of x um, xn dx with limits for example we are going to get the limits so 3 to 0 so meaning we are getting the area of this curve from point from this point to this point so we are get, we are integrating the value no we are integrating the value 
of each of the areas, the small rectangle here, to this function. So that's why we have the limits from 3 to 0. And that is the main application of an integral or the process of integration. Okay? Okay, so the, the main property of integration is that there is so called as the constant of differentiation, uh, constant of integration. Okay, need to add here a slide, no? The constant of integration. So, for example, if we have a certain derivative, no? Integrate f of x dx. So, the function is f of x, okay? So, that is the main formula for integration. Now, for example, we know that the, that the derivative or the, the integration is finding the function of a given derivative. For example, we have this one. 2x, no? integral of 2x dx. Okay. So, what is the integral of 2x dx? So, what function that, or what function that the derivative is equal to 2x? That will be x squared. Right? It will be x squared. Now, for example, we have another exa um, integral. 2x plus 2 dx. Okay. So, what function whose derivative is 2x plus 2? Okay. What is that function? Okay. So, that function will be x squared plus, so if you are going to get the, this one, the derivative of that one is um, the the function having a derivative of 2x is x squared. Now, for 2, that will be 2x. So, what if we have here a certain function, for example, um, 2, so we need to get the derivative so that will be the derivative of sample the derivative of x squared plus 3 no? so we need to get the derivative of this one dx so by differential calculus so you know that will be 2x no? 2x okay Another one, we have d, derivative of x squared plus 4, okay, dx. So, that will be again 2x because the derivative of 4 or 3 is 0. If you look closely, if you look closely, if we are going to integrate 2x dx, the derivative is only x squared. But if we are going to get the derivative of these three of these two functions are 2x plus 2x squared plus 3 and x squared plus 4, the derivative is equal to 2x. If we say that uh, integration is the inverse of differentiation or the anti-differentiation, therefore, this, if we are going to integrate 2x dx, we must come up with this value, either x squared plus 3 or x squared plus 4. But, in our illustration here, we get only x squared. Why is that? Because 3 and 4 are constants. So that's why in integration, in getting our answer, we need to have a representation of the constants which in the process of differentiation has been omitted. No? So that's why we will uh, put an representation. So that's why we have here plus c, wherein c is the constant of integration. 
the constant of integration can be eliminated or can be omitted from the solution or, or from the from the value of the integral if we have our upper and lower limit or if we have or, or, or if we are um, uh, dealing with definite integral for example here this uh, we have plus c here but if we are representing our integral with limits from a to b no from a to b f um, f of x then we could say that our value must be only f of x with limits from a to b and the value here will not need plus c so that is the purpose of constant dif the integration especially for indefinite integral okay so talking about definite and indefinite integral so if the representation of an integral is just this one f of x dx okay with no limits this is an indefinite integral it doesn't mean that it has no limit but it is assumed that its limit is infinite okay that's why we will put a constant in integration because we do not know the exact value it depends on what is the value of that infinite limit that we are talking about so that's why it is indefinite integral if the integral is represented with a limit so from b to a f of x dx so this is a definite integral okay meaning we could have an exact value no a finite value of our integral so for example for this one to get the area from to get the area of our curve so we considered only points 3 and um, 0 so that's why our area our limit is from 3 to 0 so our integral has a limit therefore this integral is a um, this integral is a definite integral okay so um, to have this one uh, much more uh, precise so the representation of this one because the one that is um, changing is our is the value of our y no? the y so this this must be dy here and this one is dy because this is our x this will be dy dy and this will be dy with limits from 0 to 3 so that is how we are going to um, exactly re represent our integral but this uh, this will be let uh, this will be um, further um, studied or further explained when we are now dealing with plane areas but as of now we are just trying to make to understand the concept of integration so in order for us to solve for the area so we need to have a definite integral which is represented by this one okay Okay, so to, to summarize everything, integration or anti-differentiation is a process of getting a function from a given derivative. So we have this one here, the value of this one or this formula, the, the, the general representation of an integration. Okay, we have also the constant of integration in which we are, the, we are, um, we are, uh, putting the uh, concept of integration to our solutions if our integral is an indefinite integral if a definite then we just um, solve for the value using the limits okay and again the two types of integral is indefinite and definite integral for our next video we will tackle more on the idea of integration the power formula and try to uh, solve some integrals of common um, functions okay so i hope you understand something in this video and as always enjoy learning